Hello friends, welcome back to another series of GMS. In this particular session, we are going to discuss about the persistent stores. So let us, let us discuss first what is persistent store, okay? So we have a lot of different subcomponents in WebLogic. That means when we configure a lot of resources in WebLogic, okay, for that we need to configure a persistent store for storing certain kind of a data. Okay, and when we talk about the JMS, okay, for in JMS, if you have some knowledge of JMS, then uh, we uh, create a different queues and topics, and then uh, certain applications send a message to your queue and topics, and some applications can pick up the message from queue and topics, okay, but this queue and topics get targeted to the JMS server, okay, and JMS server, which is, you can say it is a physical repository for all the messages, okay, that means your messages, which is coming from application one to your JMS server, it is getting stored somewhere, and then from there, your application two is picking up the message. Okay, so this is the case specifically in terms of the JMS. But but the main thing is that your message is getting physical messages are getting saved somewhere in your file system, right? It could be file system or it could be a database system. So similar to your JMS, there would be a store and forward SF uh, resource in the WebLogic as well. Okay, apart from that, there's some JTA and uh, diagnostic framework as well are there. Okay, so if you are going to configure these kind of resources in your project domain, like if you're going to work with the JMS services, if you're going to work the self agent, which is again uh, similar to the JMS. Okay, and if you are configuring the JTA, okay, for JTA, we will have a differentiation next time. I will publish that as well. Okay, and apart from that, we have a WebLogic diagnostic framework as well, right, which we configure for, for certain kind of a watch and notifications, okay. Uh, so if you're if you're configuring these kind of resources, okay, then you have a liberty to save the data, related data, at two level. Either it is in a file system level in your uh, operating system or it could be in the JDBC based store, okay. So when we talk about the WebLogic server persistent store, then we have two options for that one. Either you can define your persistent store as a file based store or you can define it as a JDBC. If you're defining it as a file-based store, then your data will be get stored in your file system. All the messages, when we talk about the JMS, where messages are coming uh, to your queue and topic, right? Then those messages will get stored at the file system level. There would be some directory inside your file system and the messages will get stored there. But if you have configured your persistent store as a database, which means JDBC-based store, okay, then all the messages will get stored in your database. There are different pros and cons for that one. There is a default configuration of the partition store. If you are not defining that one, we'll see that in the next few slides. Okay. So let us talk about the file store. So file-based partition store is the easiest type of partition store to configure. Okay. So as I said, uh, there would be a default file store for your JMS server as well. And the default file store is, uh, default partition store is file store. That means your, your messages, if you're configuring the JMS, Okay, and that means your, your messages will be getting stored at the file system level somewhere. Okay, and WebLogic simplify creates a file at a specified location on disk and write messages to that file. So that means you will create a directory. Okay, and even you are not creating a directory, there would be a default directory would be assigned to your messages and your all messages will get stored there. And in the event that WebLogic instance goes down while there are still messages in the file store, those messages will be processed when the instance is restarted. Okay, now this is a feature of JMS as well, right? Where if you are... Uh, some applications are sending messages to your uh, JMS provider and then some applications are picking the message from the JMS provider and in, in between, if your any of the destination goes down, okay, uh, or maybe your server get crashed, okay, then your messages will be stored in your file system level and once your server is up, that means once your JMS provider or JMS services are up, it will be get processed. So your messages will not get lost, okay. And when we talk about the default location of your file system, uh, JMS, okay, then there would be a directory with the name data store and default inside your server folder, okay, inside your domain, okay, that means for in, inside the domain, you, you, you will see a folder with name servers, right, which is a staging server or you can see the root folder for all of your managed servers and admin server, inside that you will see a folder with your name of your admin server and managed server, click on that server name, inside that you will see a folder with name data, inside data there would be a folder store and inside the source there would be a folder with name default. Okay, so this is the default directory of your JMS services. Okay, if you are not configuring the persistent store explicitly. Okay, if you wanted to change this parameter as well, so when you go, when you create a persistent store, okay, during the configuration of JMS, you can have a separate directory for uh, for this messaging services, or you can say uh, for the messaging persistent store. So it is customizable. So you can create your own directory as well, but this is the default directory for your JMS services. 
Okay, so when we configure, how we can configure the file-based persistent and store is that it's very easy. You can go to your admin console, click on services, and then persistent store. Once you will click on persistent store, then you will see an option. Click on the new, and inside new, you will see two options: create file store and then create JDBC store. The first option is about to create the file-based persistent store. Okay, so here it will ask for a name. Okay, you can give a name for your file store, and then important parameter is about giving the directory. Okay, so this is the directory where your messages will get stored in the GMS. Okay, and as I said, there would be a default directory as well. If you are not defining any path for this particular uh, parameter, it will automatically take the path of the same as I have explained in the previous slide, which will be a data store and default folder. Okay, inside that folder, your all the messages will be stored. Okay, and after that, you can target your particular position store to a uh, manage server okay in my case i have targeted my position store to manage server one and this is the same manage server to which i will target my jms server as well because when we create the position store we, we target position store to a jms server okay so in my case my jms server to which i will going to assign this particular position store is targeted to my server one so that is the reason my this particular position store will be targeted to ms one so that's it your file store uh position store is created Okay, for that you can see the type is as a file store and the target is my MS1. Okay, and then you go to your JMS servers position store and then you can assign this position store to your JMS server. Okay, and this is depend which which configuration you are doing first. Okay, if you are creating JMS server without creating a position store, then during the creation of JMS server, it will prompt you to create a position store. Otherwise, if you are creating the position store first, and then you're creating a JMS server, then during the creation of JMS server, it will give you a drop box where you can select your persistent store. Okay, there are different options to uh, assign this persistent store to a JMS server. Okay. Now, when we talk about JDBC store, as I said, uh, because it stores the data, uh, your messages in the database level. So to access your database from your application, ser application server, we have a data source, right? So that means you have to create a data source, right? Which will be you assigned to your JDBC JDBC based persistent store because JDBC or because the data source is only the option to, to reach your database right, in WebLogic server. Okay. So, and uh, if I'm saying that we, our database store would be a JDB persistent store would be a JDBC, then our messages will get stored in my database. And how I will, I'm going to reach my database with the help of data source, right? So, take a small comparison when we talk about the comparison of a file store and JDBC accessible stores as well. This would be important from your interview point as well. Okay. When you are going for uh, for the web logic server admin interviews, okay, and specifically the if the interviewer is expert in the GMS, then that could ask you a question the difference between file store and JDBC uh, persistent store. So first one is the default persistent store can only be a file store. So as I said, the out of two, the default persistent store is file store, okay, and that you cannot change. That if you wanted to make the JDBC as, your, uh, per, uh, as, a, as a default file store, that is not possible. The file system would always remain default. Okay. And both have the same application interface. That means no difference in application code. That means if you are using a, uh, even you are using a JDBC or even you are using a file store, there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any change in application code. Okay. These all are the basic backend things. All things being equal, file store generally offer better throughput than a JDBC. When we talk about the throughput, then file store, which is, uh, closely connected to your operating system may give you the high throughput. But again, if your database is running on high-end hardware and very fast disk, okay, and WebLogic server is running on the slower hardware or the slower disk, then the JDBC or database store would give you the better performance. File stores are generally easier to configure an administrator because you just create it from the console and then give a directory path and it will be get configured. Okay, and do not require that WebLogic system depend on any external component. That means you don't have any dependency on any, any external component. That means uh, for database-based persistent store, you have a dependency on the database. You need a database, right? And But when we talk about the file store base, there is no such dependencies, okay? And file store generate no network traffic, right? Because your hard disk is attached to your operating system. And when we talk about the JDBC-based persistent store, which is an external database, then your application need to connect with the database. There would be network traffic in that case as well, right? So there could be a, a small network traffic. And in case your network is get break in between, then you will have a problem with your JMS services. And JMS stores may be easier to handle failure recovery, right? Why failure recovery is that? Because my 
messages are stored in my database so if one of my managed server get crash i can point my another managed server to my database easily right and but if it is a file based persistent store that means your messages are if if messages are getting stored at the file system level then in that case you don't have a liberty at that time you have go for a server migrations okay now how to create a jcb storing jdbc persistent store is that for that means for when when we are saying that our messages are getting stored in my database so first i said i need a database then i need a need a connectivity my connectivity with my database with the help of data source right but where exactly my uh, messages are going to be stored in my database in the tables right so that means i have to i need a table in the my database as well right to store my uh, messages right and to create a table in your database that ddl that sql command is come with the web logic by default okay and in the red highlighted is the jar file which contain the sql file okay and even you don't need to take care of the execution of the file manually it is automatically taken care by the web logic it automatically create when you create a jdbc based persistent store it will automatically take the sql file from this jar file and automatically create it for you in your table right and how it create in your table because it will connect to your database with the help of data source that you are going to create and it will automatically execute this sql and it will automatically create that create the table for you which will store your all the messages okay and if your uh, if your uh, table is already exists in your database then this will this option will get ignored that means it will not going to create that table again or it not going to give any kind of a error or exceptions in that case okay so apart from that the sql that is provided with the oracle you will have a option to to provide the path of certain custom custom uh, custom sql as well that means you can create your own table and then you can for the message storing and then you can specify the path of that sql sql file from the console as well so that one if you are specifying the path of for giving the path of a particular sql file from the admin console during the configuration so that in that case that particular sql file will get get executed and all the content inside that file get executed and if suppose that we are creating a certain different tables so then that table get, table get created at the, at the database level and all the messages will get stored in that particular custom table and that is specifically required when you are going for an unsupported database sometimes okay that is the case for such kind of a scenarios okay and if a ddl file name is not specified in the create table from ddl file field then jdbc automatically detect the backend table does not already exist and as i said if the table is not there it will automatically take the table from this jar file which is highlighted in red and it will automatically create a table for you okay and this is the configuration where we go for the configurations of our uh, database or uh, persistence store okay then click on persistence store click on your uh, database jdbc store and configuration tab again configuration tab and then there is a column called create table from ddl file okay so if you wanted to have your own uh, tables okay apart from which is default ship with the web logic server then you can specify here but as i said this is the case which is used specifically when we go with certain kind of unsupported database okay if you are going with the uh, with the db2 oracle or or mysql okay these are the supported database for that this option is really not required so the configuring your uh, jdbc store there are very straight forward step you have to create a data source and then you have to Uh, once it is created you have to associate your data source with the jdbc persistent store okay and when you uh, once you create a table then there is an option to provide a prefix for your table which is going to create in your database and it is recommended to give a custom prefix for your table that means that uh, the table that created in by the web logic is it is with the name of wl store wl capital and then store so wl store with the name of the table for storing the jms messages but if we have a different subsystems different applications different jms configurations where you have a different multiple applications uh, deployed in your in your domain which may need a different server or different messaging uh, table for each and every application for that in in that case to make a differentiate between all the applications and the corresponding tables jms tables you can give a prefix so that your table will be get created with the name of prefix for example dev_wlstore prod_wlstore test_wl store this kind of things okay and then you have to associate the jdbc store with your subsystem that you are going to use okay now we'll quickly see how we can create a jdbc persistent store so click go to your admin console click on persistent store and click on new create jdbc store after that give the name of your jdbc store and as i said you have to give a prefix for the table that it will create okay so by default if you will not give the prefix the name or table name would be wl store but it is always recommended to give a, a meaningful prefix for that one okay so i have given the name as demo domain underscore okay and then select the data source that will be 
going to uh, to use by the your JDBC persistent store. So I have given I haven't show you how to create a data source. That is a very simple stuff. And if you don't know how to create a data source, then you can look for my channel and I have posted a video on data source as well. Okay. So here because my data source is already created, so we have to select the data source from the Dropbox. Then click select the target of to which you are going to 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 uh, target this particular JDBC persistent store. Okay, now it is ready. You can see that my database uh, persistent store is ready and the type is JDBC store and I have targeted it to manage server one. Okay, now if you want to assign it to your subsystem to mean JMS server. In my file system case, what I have done, is, what I had done, I had created a file store based persistent store and then I have assigned that to my JMS server. Now I'm doing the same thing here because instead of my file system, I have created a JDBC file system store. So I am going to assign the JDBC to my subsystem, which is my JMS server, right? So click on JMS server. If you haven't created yet, then click on new. Okay. And then give the name of to your, JM, uh, to your JMS server, right? And then it will prompt you for the persistent store. Okay. Now, because my persistent store is already created, so you can select it from the Dropbox, select your target, and your JMS server is created with the persistent store as demo JDBC store. So in the screen, you can see that I have a two persistent stores. The first one is demo JMS one, which is the file store type as file system. And for, for the demo JMS server, I have a, uh, a persistent store of type demo, demo JDBC store, right? Okay, so in both cases, when we talk about the first JMS server, which is J, uh, demo JMS one, the messages will get stored at the file system level to a path which I have given to my persistent store. And second case where my JMS server name is demo JMS server for which I have a persistent store as demo JDBC store for that the messages will get stored in my database. Okay, and when you will start the server after configuration, you will see this kind of a log in the your uh, particular log file. Okay, it will show you that it is going to create a table with the name as demo domain underscore WL store. As I said, demo domain underscore I have given as the prefix, right? And WL store is the default table name. So it will add table name to the prefix and then it will create this table in your database, which we can go to the database and see in the inside your tables as well. And this is how, uh, this is the difference between file store and JDBC based position stores and how we can configure both. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.